Hey everyone, this video is on a charged particle in electric fields. By way of review, a uniform electric field can be produced by a pair of parallel metal plates that's connected to a potential difference. And a potential difference is also known as a voltage. This can be easily set up when you have a pair of parallel metal plates connected to a battery which produces a DC voltage or power supply. Between a pair of parallel metal plates, you have a uniform electric field. The magnitude of this uniform electric field is given by the voltage or the potential difference between the metal plates divided by the distance d between the two metal plates. The voltage or the potential difference has a unit of volts, while the distance d has a unit of meters. And as a result, the usual SI unit for an uniform electric field is in volts per meter. When a charge is inside a uniform electric field, it will be acted upon by a force due to the electric field. We'll call this the electric force. The magnitude of this electric force is given by the equation force or F is equal to charge Q multiplied by the electric field strength E. And previously we have discussed that the electric field strength is also given by the voltage or the potential difference divided by the distance between the plates. In this equation, force has an SI unit of newtons, charge has an SI unit of coulombs, and E has an SI unit of volt per meter as previously discussed. The interaction between a charge and the electric field depends on the nature of the charge, specifically whether the charge is positive or negative. When a pair of parallel metal plates is connected to a potential difference, the side that's connected to the positive terminal of the battery is given the positive charge, while the side that is connected to the negative terminal of the battery is given the negative charge. The electric field will run from the positive terminal to the negatively charged terminal. When a charge is positive, it will be acted upon by a force due to the electric field towards the negative side. If the charge is negative, it will be acted upon by a force towards the positive side. So the direction of this force due to the electric field depends on whether the charge is positive or negative. A proton enters an electric field produced by a pair of parallel metal plates with a potential difference of 150 volts, and this is separated by a distance of 2 meters. Calculate the force and acceleration due to the electric field for the proton. And we can use the following information for this question, the charge of a proton, and also the mass of a proton. So as discussed previously, the magnitude of this electric force is given by the charge multiplied by the strength of the electric field. And we also discussed that the electric field strength is given by the voltage or the potential difference between the metal plates divided by the distance between them. The charge of a proton is positive 1.602 times 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. The voltage or the potential difference is 150 volts and this is divided by the distance between them, which is two meters. And this gives me an electric force of 1.2 times 10 to the minus 17 newtons. The acceleration due to this force that the charge or the proton experiences can be given by Newton's second law. We can take the electric force and divide by the mass of the proton. So this is 1.2 times 10 to minus 17 newtons divided by the mass of a proton which is also given 1.673 times 10 to the power of minus 27 kilograms. And this gives me quite a large acceleration of 7.2 times 10 to the power of 9 meters per second squared. What's also worth noting is that both the force and the acceleration, because these are both vector quantities, we need to also indicate the directions. As we discussed earlier, the direction of the force and acceleration depends on whether the charge is positive or negative. Since a proton is positive, both the force and acceleration will be directed towards the metal plate that is negatively charged. So the direction of both the force and acceleration will be towards the negatively charged plate. Since the direction of this electric force depends on the nature of the particle's charge, the motion of the charge also depends on whether it's positive or negative. As you can see in the simple illustration, a positive charge will experience its motion towards the side that's negatively charged, and a negative charge will experience the motion towards the positively charged metal plate. 
The force due to the electric field strictly acts in the vertical plane. It is parallel to the electric field lines. As we saw earlier, the electric field line will run from the positive towards the negatively charged plane. The direction of the force due to this electric field also runs in the same orientation. Specifically, for a positive charge, the electric force will act downwards towards the negatively charged plate, and for a negative charge, the force will act upwards, again, in a vertical direction that is parallel to the electric field lines. And this is also the force due to the electric field. Notice how there are no forces present in the horizontal orientation. That is, there's no forces that are perpendicular to the electric field. Since the forces are purely vertical, the motion the charges will experience can be described as projectile motion, whereby it is parabolic in shape. And this is because the horizontal velocity of both charges, whether it's going towards the right or towards the left, are both constant in the absence of any forces, while the vertical velocities or the vertical components of the velocities will change due to the forces of the electric field. Let's compare electric fields versus gravitational fields. The similarity of both fields is that a charge in both fields will experience a constant force and acceleration, which causes a displacement or motion to be parabolic in shape as we saw earlier. Just like in a gravitational field, the motion of a charged particle inside an electric field can also be resolved into a vertical and a horizontal component for the velocity, whereby the horizontal component of the velocity is constant because there is no forces acting in the horizontal direction. On top of the similarities, there are numerous differences between electric fields and gravitational fields and the effects on charged particles. First of all, the nature of the force and acceleration will be different. Of course, one of them is due to the electric field, while the other is due to a gravitational field. Furthermore, the magnitude of gravitational acceleration on a small charge is significantly smaller than that due to the electric field. We'll have a look at why this is the case in a moment. Along the same line, the magnitude of the two forces or acceleration, that is the electric force or the gravitational force, it depends on different parameters. For example, the electric force depends on the charge of the particle, whereas the gravitational force will depend on the mass of the particle. In addition, another difference is that the direction of a charged particle inside an electric field depends on the nature of the charge. So remember that a positive charge will be acted upon by a force towards the negatively charged plate, whereas a negative charge will be acted upon by a force towards the positively charged plate. In contrast, the direction of the force or acceleration in projectile motion is more consistent, that is, it is always downwards or towards the center of the Earth if we are referring to the Earth's gravitational field. Here's an example to illustrate the differences in magnitude of gravitational forces versus electric forces acting on a small charge. I've used electron as the example. For gravitational forces, I've used mass of the electron and mass of the Earth, as well as the average radius of the Earth, to calculate a rough approximation of the gravitational force between an electron and the Earth. And this comes down to a very, very small number because an electron has an extremely small mass. On the other side, we've calculated the force due to the electric field, which is again given by the charge of the particle multiplied by the strength of the electric field. This is the charge of the electron, and let's assume the strength of the electric field is 1 volts per meter for simplicity's sake. And this gives me also quite a small magnitude of force. But if you can compare the magnitudes between the gravitational force, which is to the power of minus 30, versus the magnitude of the electric force, which is power of minus 19. Despite the fact that the electric force seems very small, it is far larger compared to the magnitude of the gravitational force.